Um, thank you, Mark, for that introduction, reminding us, I think, very um, astutely that families come in all shapes and sizes, and um, government support needs to take account of that. It's an enormous pleasure to be here, and fantastic to see so many of you here. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Catherine a week or so ago. I have to say, I always admired her enormously in opposition when she was working at um, the Fawcett Society. So um, I'm sure that she is bringing all the same energy uh, to the work um, of the FPI now. And I'd like to pay tribute to the Family and Parenting Institute, who through spreading effective practice and managing the Parenting Fund have supported hundreds of voluntary sector organizations and tens of thousands of practitioners, enabling them to deliver help that's made a real difference to parents and families across the country, and also to pay tribute to the many organizations, varied organizations who are here today, who support our parents, grandparents, our children, right from, from babies through to teenagers, um, and the most vulnerable in society. I'm truly honored to have been asked to take on this role and to work with you, and I'm really looking forward over the next few months to getting to know many of you better and working closely with you. One message I want to give from the outset that I'm, I'm sure many of you will already have understood, and that's that the renaming of the department does not in any way represent a shift away from the priority we have for children and families. In fact, some of the changes that have happened, particularly the Families um, Task Force, the Prime Minister's Families Task Force that I'll speak about a little in a moment, I think actually increase the priority and the way in which family, serious way in which families um, are going to be treated by this government. We know the scale of the challenge that we face. And I think despite the best intentions of the previous government, um, who did work very hard on, um, particularly on trying to uh, drive down inequality, and the best the hard work of many on the front line, we know that our society is still very, very deeply unfair. In this country, over two million children live in poor housing, in crowded rooms and squalid conditions. Out of every five children, one is living in poverty. Just 21% of children in care achieve five or more A to C grades at GCSE, compared with an average of 70% for children who are not in care. And young people from poorer backgrounds are less than twice as likely to go to university than those from richer backgrounds. I represent a constituency in northwest London where it includes some of the, the wealthiest areas in the country and also some of the poorest areas in the country living side by side. So I see the nature of that inequality every day in my constituency office and in my advice surgery. I see the anxieties that parents have for their children and their, and their young people. I see um, the, the difficulties that some of them have with succeeding at school. I see those consequences. And the one of the staggering figures um, for my constituency is that a child born in Halston, which is in one of the poorest areas, will die more than 10 years before a child born in Kensington, just a few miles down the road. Now, they are shocking statistics, but unfortunately, they're true. And we have a moral duty to do our utmost to change the situation, to narrow the gaps between rich and poor, and to work as hard as we can to make our society fairer. But sadly, we also have another moral duty, which has to be a priority for this government. We have a responsibility to all our families to deal with the deficit now and not let our children shoulder the burden for past mistakes. We need to reduce the deficit and return this country to a sound financial position. But it makes no sense, economically, socially or morally, to abandon poorer children along the way, to abandon families in need, to abandon hope for a better future. So as a government, we are committed to working with you to bring about sustained improvement and to make this country fairer. That's why we will be refocusing Sure Start, not scrapping it, Mark, refocusing Sure Start, ring fencing its revenue budget for this year and introducing extra health visitors dedicated to helping the most disadvantaged families to make sure that we can reach out to those families who are most in need. It's also why one of the key priorities for this coalition is to introduce a pupil premium, money targeted specifically to disadvantaged school children to offer them the extra help to make sure that they fulfill their academic potential. 
and it's why we'll be extending free childcare for three and four year olds to 15 hours a week and funding early, provision, early years provision for more than 20,000 of the most disadvantaged two year olds. We remain committed to improving the lot of those most in need in society. It is the reason I went into politics and it is this government's vision for the future. And we're doing this because we understand just how important families are. They are the bedrock of our society. Evidence shows that family setting has the biggest impact on children and their outcomes. We believe that families need the freedom to live their lives as they see fit, and they don't need government to burden them with regulation after regulation, restriction after restriction. Government's role, we believe, is to help foster the right environment in which families can thrive to empower them to help reduce the pressures and stresses that they face. Now, Mark, you mentioned um, in your opening about intergenerational support. And I think this is also one of the, the, the things that government needs to think about. It's not just the formal settings for supporting families. I mean, we have clear um, coalition uh, priority to put relationship support on a, a stable financial footing. But of course, much of the support for families to thrive is also informal. It's about the informal networks of friends. It's about the social capital built by working with them, perhaps a local voluntary sector organisation, maybe through your church or your mosque or many of the other ways in which you, you form those kind of links of support. And government has an important role to play in supporting all of those networks as well. Now that's why the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister have set up a Childhood and Families Task Force to tackle the barriers that prevent a happy childhood and a successful family life. Now to have the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister on a task force doesn't get much more, much more central to the government's priority. And I think there has sometimes been a danger that families have fallen between the, 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 the silos of particular departments. And the Prime Minister was very clear that this should be a priority for government. And so by setting up this, this task force for a limited period of time, he's hoping that it will energise policy formation um, around families and people will then go back out into their departments and take that work forward after the spending review. Now the task force will meet for the first time this week so I, I can't preempt all that it will do um, and I'm sure that over the next, next week or so there will be announcements about the key areas of work and the way in which the task force will work and the way in which it will want to work um, with the voluntary sector and with experts in the field. But I'm, some of the, the particular themes that uh, the Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg outlined in his speech when it was launched is, is worth me just sharing with you if you hadn't already heard about them. <coughs> Families um, will say often, parents will say they don't have enough time to spend together as a family. They want uh, much more flexible working arrangements. It's one of the things that you picked up in your, in your report card. Um, and, and the right to flexible working is a key coalition priority for us. Um, so what's one of the themes that it will, it will look at? We'll also look at the experience of families who have a disabled child, who face very particular difficulties, um, they're more likely to be in poverty, more likely to be out of work, very, very um, particular stresses if you have a child who is, is disabled. Um, I also think we could do far more to help children avoid the pressures that many parents feel forces their children to grow up too quickly advertising that sexualizes children or makes them anxious about the way that they look. And that would be another theme that I know the Deputy Prime Minister and the Prime Minister are very keen that this task force should look at. So from the very top of government, we are committed to tackling those barriers and restoring the culture of community and responsibility, which is so crucial to the safety and success of our children and families. But of course, we know that government alone cannot solve all of society's ills. And some of the things that you picked up in, in the report card that you published this weekend, I think, show that very clearly. Things around, around neighbourhood, for example, is a very good example of where the voluntary sector um, are extremely important in, 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 in boosting the relationships that you, you have um, with your neighbours, in making your, the place where you live um, um, more suitable for families and, and a better um, place to bring up children. In this time of great financial strain, I think we need to find many more creative methods to achieve our ambitions. So we know as a government that we need to work much closer with our partners. We need to learn from your experience, your ideas and your expertise. 
We need to make it easier for those local experts and voluntary organisations that already do great work to play a bigger role, to work together, together with statutory agencies and make even more of a difference to families around the country. Because the organisations here today represent the very best of our vision for a big society, a society in which more people play their part and take responsibility for one another. We recognise the need to work with you and really want to work closely with you over the next few months and indeed years. So I look forward to getting to know many of you better and I look forward to reading the report that FPI will produce as a result of this conference, which I know they promised to forward on to me um, very soon. And I hope that by working together we will see real change for the better, to create a fairer, stronger, safer society where the gaps that I know focus all of your work that um, are a priority for me, I hope that we will be able to narrow those gaps rather than see them widen and a place where our families can prosper even in difficult times.